Adrian Bolzatsky, and uh, I, I'm a PhD student in electrical and computer engineering. And I specialize in things that are um, primarily image processing uh, and learning computers. So image, proce image processing is when we extract important d uh, data out of images, videos, uh, any kind of content, and getting a computer to understand that and uh, come up with an association for it. So uh, I had a problem, though. And I, my problem was that I was working on my thesis, and I found that the work that I was doing was becoming far too abstract and, and theoretical and going in a direction where uh, I, it just, I, was, I was getting lost in the math. And I'm going to show a quick quote here. And uh, hmm. <laughs> huh. there we go. OK, so my, I'm a huge Tesla fan. And I decided to, to pick a quote from Tesla. And I, I, it's, today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relationship to reality. And I did that. I made that mistake. I found that the work I was doing was becoming so abstract that it really had no, no meaning anymore. So the solution I came up with was uh, I wanted to use my business to help my research. And the way I did that was uh, last year I realized th this, this fundamental idea that if I released an Xbox game, and the game is charades for Connect. I would be able to achieve both goals and uh, make it profitable to continue my research and actually build the system that I wanted to build. So the way the game worked was you'd get a word or a phrase, just like in regular charades, and you would have to do the gestures uh, associated with it. And as you did those gestures, it would convert your body into an avatar. And it would send it through the network. And friends, teammates, groups of people would have to guess what gesture you were making. And the way they would guess is they wouldn't press buttons or, or, or click things. And they would guess by yelling out the answer. And when they got it right, they got points. And they got points based on how fast they got the answer right. In the image processing world, this is called supervised learning. And the game was a front. The game was really just a way where I could crowdsource gestures out of a global network and region code all the data. So I would take all this data, feed it into an, uh, like a learning computer, an artificial intelligence, and it would come up with ways to understand these gestures. And it would come, uh, come up with the, the underlining truth to each gesture, something that uh, only the intelligence system could, could see it was also profitable. What I would be able to do is I would be able to t sell those gestures to other people. I would be able to sell those gestures as premium gestures to other gaming companies, other gaming studios, and uh, ultimately security companies. Uh, the way security companies would use it is they would buy an aggressive gesture pack. So they'd buy uh, a collection of like punches, kicks, things that shouldn't happen in public settings. Uh, you, you know, so um, an airport would get it, casinos, banks, any one of those companies, and also marketing companies were buying them, trying to come up with ways how to recognize these gestures. Uh, also, we'd be able to just simply add a word into the, the game, and right away, we'd have a global code of what that gesture is and what the universal truth of that gesture is. Which brings me to my next point. Uh, there is a... Well, actually, you know what? First, gesture recognition is the primary way that immersion uh, is enhanced. Uh, the reason why we don't have immersion and really good intuitive systems is because there hasn't been a great gesture recognition system yet that could understand gestures and, and learn them and, and equate meaning to them. But I believe that there's a paradigm shift coming in the way goods come into your home, school, and business. And what I mean by that is that one way is that 3D printers are going to become mainstream very, very soon. And we're going to be able to print goods that we purchase online in the home, and they're going to become cost effective. It's going to change the way manufacturing is done. You guys saw the, the robot arm the video a few minutes ago? Uh, those guys are friends of mine, and what they're doing is the next generation of that robot arm, they're printing it. They're not going overseas to manufacture it. They're actually going to print the whole arm. And not only the mechanics of it, but actually the uh, latex coating that makes it look very human. And uh, if you saw Terminator, we referenced Terminator earlier, uh, if you saw Terminator, when they build the killer robots, they still have to dip them in the skin and go through the whole process. This is all one process through that. So I think the other way the, the, this is going to change is that immersion is going to become far more mainstream in the home. And what I mean by that is that you will be able to interact not only with gestures, but you're going to be able to, to buy virtual items the way you buy apps today. So 
at home or anywhere, work, school, business, uh, you'll be able to download maybe a lamp. Someone designed it, an artist, uploads it, you download it, throw it in the corner, it gives off light, but it's not really there. There's no substance to it. And things like, uh, you know, reliving your favorite movies are going to be possible in the home. Let's say you live in a miserable basement apartment. What you're going to be able to do is create a virtual window in your apartment that goes into, let's say, Paris. And even though you're not in France, you're going to have an immersive experience where you're able to look out into Paris in your environment. I think that's going to fundamentally change the way business is done, and it's going to change the way artists, engineers, people create items for purchase, and that's going to be a fundamental change in the way things are manufactured. So I'll show you a quick video right now, and uh, just sort of to give you some background on what this would look like. So this is something called the cave, and it's an immersive environment where uh, virtual items exist, and you're able to walk around them. Ultimately, even virtual people are going to be able to exist in your home very soon. And what I'm working on is I'm trying to make this multi-million dollar system that only universities, oil industry, security companies, well, sorry, um, automotive industries are able to afford. And I'm trying to bring that in a cheap way into your home. And either be it by a device that we place into our living room or uh, through maybe a wallpaper that we apply to our walls. You're going to be able to immerse yourself with all these virtual items. Uh, children will be able to play with virtual toys. They'll be able to uh, download a remote control car. It doesn't have to abide by the same laws of physics. It's gonna, you can levitate, it could do anything, and when you're done with it, you could save it, delete it, archive it, throw it away. It doesn't really matter. There's no manufacturing. There's no materials cost, so it is the ultimate form of recycling. Uh, so when I ask you, when you guys will go home today, think about, go home, look at the items in your environment. Think about what could be virtual, and think about the artists of the future that are going to be able to design things and completely bypass the way we normally bring products to market in terms of uh, manufacturing, marketing, uh, distribution. All those things are about to change. And yeah, I'm going to stop there. So thank you very much, guys.